Welcome Queens to another episode. Today I have a special guest with me and wait till you meet him. His energy is infectious. I absolutely love him to bits. We are literally soul brothers and sisters from another galaxy far, far away. I'm just gonna read his bio and then I will let him introduce himself also. So today I have with me Peter Lancet and he's a hypnotist, a counselor, a coach and an alchemist. Alchemy is a process of transformation. You base metal into gold is the old metaphor for alchemy. And it's Peter's passion to guide you from where you are now to where you want to be, from who you are now to who you want to be. The change is alchemy in action. So Peter changes minds and he changes lives. And I'm so honored and grateful, Peter, that you've come on today. Welcome. Well, welcome, welcome to me. I have to say that this is such a wonderful surprise when you invited me on and I couldn't wait to come and do this with you and, and talk to you um, because you are a great inspiration to me, Victoria. Thank you so, uh, you so much. That. I cannot wait to dive into your story. Yeah, well, <laughs> alchemy, I, be, I suppose I better explain that, you know, because alchemy... Um, has this reputation, it's all, oh, it's occult, it's magic, which, you know, yeah, this is this is where it's come down to us through history and certainly the medieval alchemy. And it's all about change. And people have this idea that it's about turning lead into gold, which was the old metaphor. But alchemy is actually more than that. That was literally just a metaphor to bring the secret through. Mm -hmm. um, and alchemy is all about any transformation whatsoever. Now that can be a spiritual transformation it can be a personal transformation emotional physical mental transformation any transformation is alchemy and i'm an alchemist i will take you where you are now i will discover from you where you want to be what you want to be doing who's the real you let's find that out and then we'll start that process it's a collaborative process i mean again I'm probably going a little tangent here, but people think hypnosis is something that a hypnotist does to you. Mm. No, not so. It's a really collaborative process. What the hypnotist does is unlock certain doors that you've had locked inside. You've always got the power to do all of these things within you. Mm. Sometimes we just need somebody that's got the skill to unlock the door because we've been searching for the key for so long. And somebody can come along with a torch, find the key, unlock the door, and boom, suddenly, wow. You know, it's, oh. it, yeah, you're there. I mean, I run programs, but quite often, one-on-one -on -one work for me is people come here, they'll have chronic pain, for example, whether it's emotional or physical, mm. done. One session, done. They'll wow. walk out of here. Smoking, you know. You walk out, you walk in as a smoker, you walk out as a non-smoker. And when I say a non-smoker, I mean, you won't smoke again. And, and it works. I work with people's body image. I mean, I hesitate to call it weight loss because weight loss is perhaps something that people think they want. But weight loss is actually just going to be a side effect of the change and the transformation we make. It will okay. happen. It will happen. But it's just a side effect of the transformation we do so much work and i know that you do this you know so i don't you know i don't want to be treading on your toes because you have a wonderful program i know about loving yourself self-worth body love and you do incredible work you know I, I, that's why i say i mean you, you inspire me in so many ways but you know, you. this is one of the areas where we do crossover <laughs> well no that's this is the point i would love to for you to share everything that you can help people with so then they can you know you know like your people are your people my people are my people sure. if my people listen to this are drawn to work with you this is the whole point like we need to heal the world together yeah. so feel free to share anything and i would love to start off by asking you and i don't even know all of your story peter no you don't can you would you share where you where you are now how you ended up doing what you're doing and what events in your life i know you can sure trauma. sure i will you know i mean it's a strange story <laughs> so Wait i mean obviously I, <laughs> I i was born so we start at the very beginning and i was an unwanted baby and you know you do know that part of my story because it's in 
I posted it as a blog last week in a, a group that I run with Sally Albright and then, you know, what is that? The Living Well Village. I had to think then, didn't know what it's called. It's The Living Well Village on Facebook. But I, I posted that in there. It's the first time I told anybody that story. So let's just say I went through one or two, two traumatic events growing up and I felt alienated, abandoned. I have abandonment issues um, at this point and I, you know, rejection issues, terrifying rejection issues at this point. I don't have them now, by the way, so just so that we know. And I was interested in anything that was different, you know, magic, spirituality. I had an aunt who took her own life, which, you know, that, that was probably the worst event in my life when I was 17. But I moved on and I found people found me and I found people and I started studying alternate things, alternate ways of doing things. And that led me into shamanic healing. It led me into alchemy. And because I'd studied with a group of people, um, very special group of people, but very dangerous group of people, in my opinion, <laughs> um, way back then. And that was, you know, that was a long time ago. But they they put me onto a training path that never left me and hasn't left me to this day. So that's where I came into alchemy and then with shamanic healing and so on and, and earth energy healing. And then I came across hypnosis. I would do self-hypnosis. Where did you where? It, was, it was interesting because I'd been, I'd been, I didn't, I'd been fascinated by it for a long time because it's a, a mind thing. And I'm in, I'm always interested in how the mind works because I'd done some turnarounds myself, you know, doing self-work. And, and personal growth work using self-hypnosis. I'd, I'd found various books and things like this. And I don't know what I must have um, signed up for, but I started getting things. I got, I got this um, email and it could have been a spam email. <laughs> I don't know what I'd signed up for, but I, I got this email from a guy named Igor Ledahovsky in Canada. And he's a hypnotist. He's a master hypnotist trainer. And there are three that I've, I've worked with. And he, when you click into this thing, he made this offer about how to learn street hypnosis. You know the stuff, sleep now. Mm. And I was really interested in how do you do that? You know, this instant induction hypnosis and, and having fun with people and so on. So I clicked in. This guy's marketing clicks you into a 38-page PDF Whoa, what a, no that's joking. not a sales page I want to read. <laughs> I'm telling you, what he does know is that if you do get to the end of that, you're buying. Wow. So he, he does get his trial. I, well, I save all of his ads now, so <laughs> I'll show you one day. Yeah. But, but anyway, halfway down, there was a link to this YouTube um, video. And it was this guy walking into this busy London pub and they... they videoed it covertly and he walks up to the bar and I was watching what's going on and the bar he, he reached out a hand to shake hands with the barman which is kind of unusual in itself and he did what's known as a handshake interrupt so he pulled his hand away grabbed the other guy's hand put it up here and said and I know I know what he's doing now and he's, he's tapping the inside of that palm he said focus on that palm now what happens to the conscious mind when when we do something called a pattern interrupt the conscious mind switches off and you have access to the unconscious mind. So you can put in a really quick suggestion like sleep now. Is that why when you were hypnotizing me the other day and was talking about my inner, all this inner stuff and all of a sudden you asked me like a random question. I was like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's called a pattern interrupt. So anyway, anyway, I, sh I shouldn't give the secrets away. Otherwise, it won't work, <laughs> it. but anyway, so I saw that and I thought I want to do that. I've got to find that guy. I've got to find that guy. And he's English, I could tell, because his accent is a bit, a bit London. And, and I found him. And as it turned out, he was living an hour away in the Peak District just outside Derby. He'd moved no. up from there. So it took a while. I, I got a hold of him. I phoned him. And we had a conversation. And he agreed to mentor me one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't looked back after that. And then I, got, I, did, the, I did hypnosis one-on-one -on -one with him. And then I got there. I got his family, because he works with his father. And they've got one of the, the biggest and most successful hypnotherapy schools in the world, especially now. Now everything's online. They are global. Mm. I go back on their courses just for the fun of it, just to go into the breakout rooms and, <laughs> and hypnotize people. <laughs> but yeah, so so I, I went on, I got their diploma. I found out about another guy in Canada um, 
the two in Canada, actually. Igor Ledehofsky lives in Canada. And then a guy named Mike Mandel. And I did his program and I certified in that and I certified in mindscaping and I do ego state therapy and stuff. So it's now become my life. And all I care about, I do have fun. I'm, I've got to tell you, I do have fun with impromptu hypnosis and having people's hands stuck to their heads and stuff. <laughs> I, I'll never stop wanting to do it. It's fun. But my big love and my big passion is finding people who are not happy. Because let's face it, whenever you feel that you need something to change in your life, whatever it is, it means you're not happy. Mm. You might be verging on happiness. You're not, you don't have to be like miserable, but you've not reached that absolute goal of where you want to be and therefore that's where I get my biggest joy my biggest joy comes from making that happen with people and I don't do it to people I do it with them and it's definitely a collaboration if I say to you are you ready to be hypnotized the moment you say yes it's a collaboration yeah okay you ready are you so let's do it now. <laughs> you're like the happiness alchemist yeah, that's a, that's, not, that's that's a good title, and I I would like to do that. A happiness alchemist. Yeah, I might just, steal. I might steal that from you. Of course, <laughs> Thank you. every single. Isn't it funny that every single thing that us human beings do is because if you take away all the layers, it's because we're trying to seek happiness. Mm. Every, I, even bad stuff, we're trying to be happy, trying to do the thing. I'm going to tell. I'm going to go even further, and this is this is my firm belief. Um, I think that every single choice you make has an emotional basis. Even if you were to shift your position in that chair. I'm it's standing. Because it, there we yeah, go. well, you're standing. But <laughs> even if you shift your position, um, it's because you're not happy entirely with the position you're in. So you're going to move. Yeah. I believe that everything is, is, has an emotional base. Even the smallest choices that you don't even consider to be a choice. If you're wow. doing it consciously then it's it's to make yourself a little bit happier than you are at the moment oh my so, god i love that yeah that's so true because we often do things without you know almost unconsciously like brushing your teeth but then of course why do you brush your teeth well because you want your mouth to like to be and fresh you, and you want to be healthy because if you don't gum disease goes right the way through you i mean that this isn't hokey science this is real science you know we can you can have all kinds of issues inflammation going right through the body through the bloodstream from gum disease gum disease can be one of the worst things mm -hmm. so we have a, a number of reasons for me it really is i want to smile yeah. <laughs> i want to have a smile <laughs> you've Ooh, got a great can we smile talk about um because by the way, everyone listening, me and Peter can literally talk for like hours and hours and hours. Oh yeah, unfortunately. We bounce yeah, each other. I learn so much from you. You give me, you say things, and then you know where you're just like, oh my God, my mind's just been blown. Let me just like sit with that for a minute. Um, I would love for you to talk about, where's it gone? Come back, Victoria. Oh yeah. How do you see, you know, you talked about pain before. Mm. So, I mean, you help people with a whole everything but can we talk specifically about um physical pain that someone's had for years and all of a sudden you just had one session with you and it's gone yeah i'll tell you i'll even talk about your half sister yeah if i'm doing have, yeah i'm doing work with with sally your half sister sally and um we've got a facebook group i think i mentioned it the living well village by the way anybody feel free come and join us on there we have a lot of fun in that village and it's all about growth going forward anyway i'll get the advert out of the way it's great but it's absolutely great do go and join that the living well village on facebook we are actually going to go live me and peter and sally next week yeah to talk about it but it's it is a great place it's brilliant Good fun. To get yourself there <laughs> anyway i you know sally and i met um last year i i was giving a talk on essential oils with a friend of mine who's a yoga teacher and she'd asked um oh can i have some of my friends around and give us a talk and i said yeah because i mean we were all doing nothing last year were we i mean it was there wasn't a lot to do and this is you know i was allowed to do that so we sat in the garden fully distanced and i took down about 30 bottles of essential oils and sally was there and one of the things she'd asked about is what do essential oils help with pain? And so I, I'd given us a sample of some stuff. And we both realized we had this passion for helping people to step through pain. You know, Sally's a physiotherapist and a neuroscientist. So in case people don't know which they won't know. And 
So she came to see me here in my um, office and my therapy center. And we were sitting talking. And as we sat talking, I noticed she was constantly playing with the shoulder. And so I interrupted, I said, <laughs> rudely interrupted. And I said, is that bothering you? And she said, yeah, she says, I've had this for, since I was, I think she said 14. Anyway, a long time. She says, and I know that there's nothing physically wrong. It is just chronic persistent pain. And some days it's worse than others. And I just said to her, do you want that to go? What do you mean? I said, do you want it to go? I can do it now. And so 20 minutes later, it was gone. It's never come back. I see Sally every week. And every time she comes to this door, I say to her, how's the shoulder, Sal? And it irritates the hell out of her. <laughs> Because it's gone. It will not come back. Because one of the things I did was put in a post-hypnotic suggestion to say that the, the more you try to find that pain, the further away it'll go. And which is why I try to keep reminding her of it. I say, by now, it's on the furthest edge of the universe. Somewhere oh, it's gone. Well. But, and does that yeah. work with emotional pain as well? So in, in a moment, I would like to digress is that the right word digress yeah digress yeah. Yeah. the right word for a change i would like to digress to food and body image related let's I'm let's go there because it. because the emotional pain that comes with that can be some of the most stuck pain mm -hmm. that people work with and there's a reason for it in my opinion this is only my opinion you you see what you think I think that the reason that that sticks so hard is because before people realize that it's an emotional pain, they've tried everything, diet after diet after diet, they've read every book. And what they have is this one core belief is that I can't do it. Yes. I yeah. can't do it. And that that's the one that's the most stuck. Now I work with that a lot. And I know that you work with that a lot. You don't, you don't do a, like a hypnosis session like like I do, but I know that you actually are hypnotizing people, whether you know that or not. Oh, I didn't know, I'm magic. <laughs> yeah, you are, because people wonder what hypnosis is, and people think it is this, sleep yeah. now. Go and going deeper, bah, 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 bah. What did I do when we first spoke with you? Yeah, you did, I don't know what... The phrase, chocolate. I don't know what phrase you use, but you did something... I'm not telling you. ...where you talk to me without me realising... Yeah. And then I rang, I rang Peter, like, because everyone knows I'm a food freedom coach. I, I openly eat what I want when I want because of the eating disorders I've had in the past. And that, that works for me. I love myself. I love how I am. And I had this thing about chocolate where I was okay, but I was eating a lot of chocolate, no shame around it, no guilt around it. But for health reasons, I would have liked to stop eating as much because we know that sugar is not great for us. Mm. Again, I'm not saying sugar's bad or wrong. No, no, no. That doesn't help. But Peter and I had a conversation. And I went to the shop and then I was like, hold on a minute. Did you do something to me? Because I went to the shop, did my things, came back. And then it wasn't until I got home that I was like, oh, my God, I've not I've not got any chocolate. Like, whoa. And I was like, hold on. What did you do? And what did you do? Or is it a secret? <laughs> well, it's not, not really a secret. It's just, you know, language patterns, influential language. It's some people call it conversational hypnosis. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been to buy a car, you'll have had rotten salesmen where you can walk away sometimes or, or something else, a big ticket item. And sometimes you'll walk away and think, how have I ended up buying that? Mm. Some people have just got this innate gift of doing it, but I teach it. I teach people how to do it. So you can do it the other way. You can go and get, you can go and talk to the salesman and get <laughs> things knocked down completely. <laughs> it's just influence. It's just a um, conversational influence. Now that's great. I mean, I, I'm not sure how ethical it is when you're using it like that, but they're going to be using it on you. They're going to try to hit your emotional spot to get you to buy the item. So for you to then use it to negotiate them to a point where you're both happy is, I don't think that's an inner, unethical, inethical, unethical. Uh, I don't think it is. So, you know, I, and I do teach it and I take, I teach it to companies as well. You know, it, it's a great way of, of learning how to talk, but with you, it was a simple thing. And I, what I did was use, a metaphor that spoke to you. I just inserted a metaphor, a little story into the it, conversation. It really did. And, and is that, that is I mean, is that to say, I mean, I mean, I know the answer to this, but you're the expert on this. Our unconscious mind is always, always listening, even when we're like not consciously aware of it. Like, how do you even explain okay. that? <laughs> right. Well, um, it's again, it's a pattern interrupt. I, I got straight in. Well, your unconscious mind is always listening. 
always listening. And there's a guy named George Miller, I think it's 1957, he came out, the research came out that the conscious mind, the one, the, the mind that we think that we have, the only mind that we think we have, you know, we, we have this mind where we keep our identity, we think that this is our identity, it isn't, by the way, but this is where we think it is, it can only hold the magic number seven plus or minus two pieces of information at any one time. That's not many pieces of information, right? Whereas the unconscious mind, some people call that the subconscious mind or even the back of the mind, it's only a label, is seemingly limitless. All the time it's working for you. It wants you to be safe, well protected. It wants you to be happy. Overall, it really wants you to be happy. So it will do anything you tell it to do. It doesn't analyze, though. It doesn't understand language in an analytic way. So often we can program ourselves. In other words, we are self-hypnotizing ourselves to do things that we don't want to do. So if you've got a habit of biting your nails, that's just, you've taught yourself to do that for some reason. Yeah. Now, from where, I, from where I come from, the unconscious mind never does anything without a positive intention. Mm -hmm. So it could have been, you've, you started biting your nails as a comfort, and then a lot of other emotions will latch onto that and trigger that, that behavior when they want your attention. Yeah. Same with unnecessary yeah. eating. And, you know, and smoking and, and all of these things, that's what happens. And all we have to do is find a line of communication with the unconscious mind. And now with conversational hypnosis, rather than, you know, for a formal induction hypnosis, it's just as easy. You know, if you get the person in the right frame of mind and, you know, you build the rapport, you can, you can do things there. I, I really don't want to say too much and not because it's a secret, but because if I tell you how that's done, your conscious mind would notice me doing it yeah. and you wouldn't get the benefit. Yes, yes, yes. I, do you, I mean, I heard something, what was I watching yesterday? And it, and again, I kind of, I knew this and I just heard it in a different context, but I loved what he said. This guy went into um, a yoga studio. In fact, oh, it's a series on Netflix called Afterlife. It's quite funny. I know Afterlife with Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah it's him. I'm just going <laughs> to make sure that I remember to watch it. Afterlife. He walked into a yoga studio and the yoga guru said, where's your mind? And he went, in my head. And he went, no, where's your mind? And then he was like, okay, I don't know, where's your mind? And he said, your mind is in every cell of your body. And I was like, hell yes. It, it is. is. It is. Yeah. I agree. I, you know, that's, that's what I understand and, and believe. Yeah. So that when, and I often say that in hypnosis, if I'm doing therapy, you know, coming towards the end and it's like, you know, and that change has been made at the molecular level, the cellular level, every nerve and fiber at the emotional level, the mental level, the physical level, it's the change has been made and it's being installed mm -hmm. ecologically and completely and is running for you now and will get stronger day by day. And that, that sort of stuff. So I start off knowing that the change is happening holistically yes and within the person can we talk about body image so i'm sure yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people who come to you who are really unhappy i mean yes weight loss is probably on their to-do list and people know what i think about specifically aiming for weight loss because you don't feel good enough and i loved what you said before about mm. it being a side effect of what you do because weight loss is. isn't bad either mm. it's just if you feel you need to lose weight in order to be worthy it's never going to no, that won't. There'll, there'll still be a, a lasting problem there. Yes. So well. how talking about the unconscious mind then, which is what drives everything we do, mm -hmm. um, from a weight loss and body image perspective, what have you noticed? Mo most people that come to you with the in, with the problem of not liking their body is like, what have they experienced from a young child that has caused them to live with? never feeling good enough oh my goodness um there are a number of things that happen you can have the installation of very limiting false negative limiting beliefs for example if you've grown up in britain for example or europe anywhere in europe come to that particularly yeah. um in the last 40 years you're likely to have heard not everybody but you are likely to have heard You've got to finish the food on your plate. Oh, yeah, that was, I had to finish it before I was even allowed dessert. How rude. They, it is very, and it's, it's unacceptable, but 
I'm not going to blame our parents because no. what we've had is two or three generations. You only got to go back a little bit and people lived through rationing in the Second World War, rationing in the 1950s, the early 1960s when rationing had finished, but we still didn't have all the choice that we have now. And also we had to pay the full value for food in those days. Food, food is now far too cheap, by the way. Yeah. Far too cheap. We are not really paying the cost of production. It's destroying the planet. I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into, into all the, the planetary ecology of this, but we're not paying the, the true value. When you hear that farmers are only getting like a penny yeah. or half a penny for a litre of milk and so on. Yeah. And then we can just we just treat food like it's plastic wrapping and we throw it away, we waste it and so on. So we've had people that grew up through that. So I can understand why parents were giving them that negative limiting belief. But that's just one. If you get somebody that's been hypnotized that way, and I'm going to use hypnotized because hypnosis is much more prevalent than people think in our lives. We couldn't actually function as human beings if we didn't hypnotize ourselves every day. That's another story. But they, that's a big one. That's a big limiting belief. And what it does is it brings guilt and shame into people, which then knocks straight on to self-worth and yeah. self-love. Yes, because because just to clarify the difference between guilt and shame, guilt is when you think you've done something wrong. Shame is when you think you there's something wrong with you. You for having done it. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. And that's right. So, you know, I find that something as simple as that is a knock on. Um, there are other emotional issues. There are people who've been through some kind of traumatic experience that that find that the food becomes their friend, their mm -hmm. comfort, it sits with them in a room. You know, it's an old cliche, you know, the, the teenage girl that's had a relationship break up and sits in a room with a tub of ice cream. It's not actually funny and it is very, very real. And what it's doing for that girl is setting something that sticks inside that will go forward unless she recognizes it for what it is and does the work to understand that the ice cream was nice for a moment, but, you know, there are other things that will comfort you that will be more beneficial and that will give you back your feeling of self-worth and self-love. Oh, I feel that so deep. And if anyone's not watching the YouTube video, I'm literally nodding my head like this the whole time <laughs> because Peter knows like chocolate for me. I mean, I believe I was um, given the love for chocolate when I was in my mum's womb for a start and then I was the second child so you know this is no disrespect to my mum it was oh my god I've got two young kids here you go have this chocolate just be quiet kind of thing and then it was if you're a good girl you can go to the sweet shop and then it was I'm anorexic so I'm not allowing anything and wow. then it was oh I'm being abused every day in a relationship all I have to comfort me is chocolate so I had chocolate as an identity so I was saying I am, which is an identity I belief, a chocoholic. So I was basically saying, I am this, which when we say I am, it's basically what we think we are as an identity level. So it's a very base of that. So yeah, I know you want to speak, Peter, but I just wanted to address oh, No, 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 that. Um, I, I think this is really interesting yeah. because it just reminded me that was the thing that got me to talk because you mentioned you used a phrase that you haven't used just that your chocolate became your best friend. Oh, it was my best friend. It was everything to me. I even joked saying I would actually marry chocolate. <laughs> I, know. I know you told me and I, I and that's that's the phrase that I used to trigger you off it. What I, don't did you you, use? I don't know if you remember what I told about you. The friend. I just told you a story. About, yeah, yeah, about friends being, yeah, that was really powerful. And I was like, that was so obvious, but at the same time, I never even could see that that way. Anyway, we, we did the work, and I'm hoping that you're still now in control of, of your love of chocolate. Yeah. Because well, you don't have to stop eating it. No, <laughs> well, I don't. And I just, I don't see it in the same way. Like, it's tasty and delicious, but it's not like, I don't need it anymore whereas i've done it's one of, of you, it's one of your friends isn't it now that you only see now and again yeah instead of instead know, of having to see them every day and being on a little <laughs> yeah you set a boundary with that friendship <laughs> that's it but the, the main thing is i've set a boundary from a place of like love for myself like, for like 
It's not like I need to stop because it's bad or wrong. It's just like, do you know what? I'm in a really good place with my self-love. I'm not re restricted. I'm not binging anymore. But I feel like the next step for me is to like work on my inner health, like with my blood sugar mm -hmm. and all of that. And so it is where you're coming from with it, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I would have done nothing with you if I hadn't felt in my heart that you just wanted to set that boundary a little wider with that yeah. old friend. Yeah. And if you if I hadn't felt that, I would have done nothing because there's nothing as you constantly say. And I and I love it when you say it. There's nothing wrong with any food. No, you know, none of them are food. evil. You know, we we have a choice of how of how we set up a relationship with any given food. Yeah, and you know what? There was there was an experiment done in I think it was in Virginia. It doesn't really matter where it was done. And I know you know you're going to know this. It was about a white bear, and there was two groups of people, and there were students, and they were like in um, they were in this room two separate rooms and they were like watched on a camera and all these things for an experiment and one group was said do not think of a white bear but when you do press this red button the <laughs> other group was said think of a white bear whenever you want and when you do press this red button 10 times more red button pressing with the group that said do not think of a white bear I mean, reverse psychology, come on. So if you're saying to yourself, do not eat chocolate, must not eat chocolate, well, you're going to eat it 10 times more than if you're like, yeah, can have it when I want it. The, the psychology behind that is oh. actually, this, we'll use the phrase, the science is in, the research is there. The unconscious mind cannot analyze grammar in language. So when you say don't, it doesn't hear that. Yeah. It so doesn't all, so all it heard it, is see it? a white bear. All it hears is eat chocolate instead of don't eat chocolate. Your attention is focused on chocolate. So your unconscious mind gives you what it thinks you want. It wants you to be happy. So it will put every temptation in your way. It's like we did that um, program last week and Rebecca mentioned something that I, I work with all the time, something called the reticular activating system in the mind. Yeah. So when you start telling yourself, don't eat chocolate, don't eat chocolate, Bing, your unconscious mind goes straight to the reticular activating system in the mind and says, start showing me opportunities to eat chocolate <laughs> everywhere. And, and that does. is so true. I mean, I had a question, but I've kind of answered it in my own mind as you were okay. speaking. Why is it different then from don't eat chocolate to you can eat chocolate if you want? What I've come up with, I wonder if it's the same for you, is because the energy and the determination we come with the don't eat this that's so much attention and energy gone to that yes, whereas if you're like, oh you can eat it it's just like yeah it's not as yeah, look, strong i'm going to tell you something that this is how this works as well and, and it's a i think it's a pretty good demonstration and i have this program and i call it a weight loss program but then when people come on it that's the last time they ever hear the term weight loss um but I always say that temptation, I've got on my website, a private page for, for my clients with a recording, it's 30 second recording. I said, whenever you're faced with any temptation at all, I make them put a, a little, um, what do you call it? Um, a shortcut on the front of their phone. So it's like the bat phone. They just <laughs> press that, it links to this, this page and they play this recording 30 seconds. And I say, it's a hypnotic recording. Don't do it while you're driving. But um, after you've listened to that for 30 seconds, the temptation has gone. How many times? Because I've got a, a link on my, a, 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 some code on my page to see how many times that's fired. It's been fired three times in three years. Wow. People, because they know they can, they don't. Yes. So it's, I think that's a bit, it's like if you've got permission, if you give yourself permission to eat anything you like, You've got the choice. It's not a problem. Yeah, you can take it or leave it, which yeah. is the name of my program. You can take it or leave it because you're in charge, and yeah. that makes well, things I a lot what easier. You just said, sorry to interrupt. In charge yeah. because mm. we're never in control. We're in charge of our thoughts and actions. We I don't like control. Control anything? No, we're not controlling it because if we try to control, you ever try to control a big dog on a lead? I'm here to tell you, I've got two big dogs. You try to control them by pulling at them. They'll pull back. It's like it's a horse. <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's the same with it's the same with our unconscious mind. If we try to control it by force, 
you know, willpower is the word we're looking for there. Willpower is won't power. It will, it won't get you to your goal. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for willpower because that you let me know if I'm in on the right wavelength with this because I've been listening to this book and it's been talking about willpower and this book gave me this vision that came in my mind so I'm going to actually get two things right I don't know okay this is very random we've got a, a smint packet here and then a lip balm right so I see willpower as so you've got let's call the lip balm will and let's call this willy so they're both willpower we've got willy and will I know, ha ha, willy penis. That's let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> and so you've got it will. had to be said <laughs> exactly. You've got Will, who's like, don't eat sugar, don't eat chocolate. You've got to be healthy. All these things. And you've got Willie, like, but it tastes good. And you know, I'm with my friends. And basically, you've got a battle of your wills because one wants one thing and one wants the other. So you're in a fight, a war against yourself. Whereas if you just dropped, for example, Will, by Will, and you've just got Willie left, there's no one telling Willie you can't do something. So Willie can do whatever he wants. Then he'd be like, oh, okay. And then it goes back to what we've just spoke about as in, okay, now it's not as urgent. It's not as like yeah. I must do. And the binges stop and all of that because- Well, Will isn't there, right? So, so Willie Willy doesn't have to worry about, oh, if I try to get to sneak some of this ice cream, Will's going to be fighting me. Because Will isn't there, he says, oh, well, you know, I, I do want some ice cream, but I don't need it now. I'll wait till later or tomorrow or whenever. Wow, yeah. Isn't it true? Whereas the whole industry, the whole world yeah. makes us feel like if we've not achieved something through willpower, then we're weak-willed. I know that I sound like a one trick pony, but what do we think that the advertising and marketing industries worldwide do? They hypnotize us. Mm, Even when you choice. walk around a supermarket and they've changed where all the, the food is, which they'll do on a certainly on a monthly basis, the large supermarket chains will, so that you have to go around every shelf and then they put certain colors at certain heights. They know the music that they're going to play. They know that when they need to sell a certain product, this type of music gets wow. people over there you can look this up i mean it's all online it's I not even a secret you. anymore um that they do it if that isn't hypnosis what is i know i sound like a one-trick pony because mm -hmm. i'm talking about hypnosis all the time but it's going on around us all the time all we have to do as individuals as human beings is break the spell yeah. you've all we've probably all seen and if you haven't i think you should watch it the wizard of oz the original one with Judy Garland. And what happens at the end? You're in this place where, oh my God, things are happening to me. And at the end, you pull back the curtain and it's wow. just an old guy. Cold shiver. I've just had a cold shiver, which is source like saying, hell yeah, basically. Yeah. So we're living in a world where we're surrounded by Oz, as it were. And behind Oz are just these marketing people that are trying to force us to see and perceive the world in a different way. And they do make us feel bad. They, they yeah. purpose. I don't like calling anybody evil because, you know, I'm not here to do that, but I think there's something a little bit insidious and nasty about specifically targeting people's conscious and unconscious minds to persuade them to do something that's not in their best interest. And then they'll say, do eat all this junk well, okay no oh my gosh victoria you teach this eat all this i know junk I, I was gonna food. pick you up on that processed food not junk food eat all this processed food because it's gonna make you happy and then you do that and it tastes nice and it makes you quote happy and then they're like but you're so bad and wrong for being this size and weight so you need to go on a diet in order to be happy so you can buy this thing now and then it's like oh my gosh well can't you imagine I, I always have this thought of who owns what in the world, because it seems to me, and I might be, I might be completely wrong, I don't know, it's just, it's just how it looks to me, that the people that own the majority of shares in the processed food industries are the same people that own the oh, yeah. majority of shares in the diet industry, and oh, they yeah. do processed diet products and foods as well. Honestly. And so they're in a win-win, aren't they? We're going to make you eat this. Then you're going to be feel feel guilty and shamed, so that you will you'll buy this ludicrous product and you'll go on our silly diet that will yo yo you up and down, 
And then you'll go back because you feel like a failure. You'll go back to the comfort of eating the processed food and we'll do this again. And it's like, to me, it seems like the same people must own both industries or at least they must be good friends. That's what's happening, Peter. And honestly, yeah. a vision came to my mind. Like imagine if like, imagine a supermarket. So I was going to take it one step further and imagine an island, but that's really not, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not realistic in today's world, but imagine a supermarket that had every single product was just white packaging and it just had on like i don't know white bread or banana or whatever so imagine if everything was white and it just literally had a label of what the thing was can you imagine how much how different we would choose to purchase without yeah. eating and everything yeah. you need you've seen them on on tinned products where you've got a big yellow strap and red letters 99p yeah. Special offer. Yellow and red are trigger colours for that. Mm. So they use a lot. They don't always use them, otherwise people would get used to it. But you'll see, you'll see it's a lot. Um because so I do colour, I do colour therapy as well. How do we take our power back? Because it's all about taking recognizing that we've back. given it away. We reckon first step is to recognize that we've given it away and that we have the power, which we do, to be anything we want to be. We have the power to ignore the programming that's coming externally through all kinds of media. Uh, and, and, you know, I even call the shopping experience media now because, like you said, it's not white packaged. That's media. That's images and words and numbers right there at you. Certain things are at certain eye level. What? Yeah, it, like, with my eye level, I swear, ever since I was a child, it followed me around. It was, oh, chocolate. Oh, she's a bit bigger. Oh, chocolate. <laughs> I know. And they do that on purpose. And it'll, it might even be different stuff. I noticed in the last time I went to a supermarket that they'd got the little packets of Haribo stuff right at the bottom that little children are going to pick up. Yeah. yeah. And then the more grown up chocolate was at eye level. And yeah. then there were bits in between. Oh, my gosh. that made, And, you know, the difference is a big difference. I live in the Netherlands. I mean, most people know that if you're a new listener. Mm -hmm. Hello. Welcome. I'm English, but from the Netherlands. Um, and their shopping experience is very different. So you go to the UK, I'm going to give Tesco and, as an example. Give them, yeah, give them a shout. The chocolate aisle and, you know, kudos to Tesco. I love you, Tesco. No, no hard feelings. But the chocolate aisle is like floor to ceiling of all these things. You go to my local supermarket, it's called Jumbo. Um, hi, Jumbo, if anyone's listening who's Dutch in here. And it's very, very small in comparison to England. It's a very small aisle. And yes, you've got a few different choices, but it's literally an eighth of the size of England. And, and of course, culture then comes into it, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does. Uh, absolutely. Now, our culture here has literally taken American culture from the yeah. 1950s. And from the 1960s onwards, we've pulled it right in. And I think... While so many Dutch people do speak really fantastic English, and I know that because I know a few Dutch people, it's still a second language and your own, your own continental European culture, Northern European culture, that Flemish culture, German culture, it's not the same, even French, you know, right. Franco-Belgian, it's not the same. The French have a different relationship to food that we do, to, yes. to the way we do in England. And yes. so do the Germans, yes. you know, and, and obviously the low countries are part of that. Yes. So for me, you know, we over here have been Americanized. Our supermarkets are definitely Americanized. I've spent a lot of time in America. I've lived in California and it's like, there's no difference. There isn't a cigarette paper's worth of difference between them. Isn't uh, it crazy? So it's, I mean, just to clarify, we're not saying processed food is bad or No, bad. not at all. We're, say, we're saying, like, what do you actually want to eat? If you take away all the fancy packaging and all the marketing and you're waiting at the till and, ooh, there's like three for what? Like, whatever, these chocolate bars, which is all well and good, but do you actually want to eat them? Or are you being, as Peter says, hypnotized mm. to eat them? Then because you've not um, joined my program and you still feel guilt and shame around this, yeah. but on a serious note, then you do that, feel guilt and shame, yeah. and then look for a diet, which is the same industry. And it's just like mind blowing. You know, the other thing, you just brought something up really important as well. 
Whereas the other thing that they've hypnotized us to do is to believe that a bargain is something that we should strive for. Oh, yeah. So I fancy one Mars bar, but they've put a pack there mm. where there are three Mars bars. And it's going to be the the price of two and a half, yeah, Mars bars or whatever, two Mars bars. I'm thinking, well, I'll have the three. Well, guess what? When you do that, you don't you don't leave. Usually, most people in my experience don't leave those three Mars bars. They don't eat one, and they'll put the other two away, and I'll have another one next week or whenever the fancy takes me. Believe me, within a couple of days, they've gone. Yeah. And you only even wanted one in the whole one, place. If I wanted one at all, I might not have wanted one at all if it hadn't been for the idea of, ooh, there's a bargain. Mm. We're programmed to believe that a bargain is a good thing. And I always, always, when they say, you'll save, well, actually, no, I won't. The, re- the only way I'll save is by not buying it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, when you say you will save the price of one by getting, you know, two, you know, three for the price of two. I'm not saving anything. I'm, I'm spending more than I would if I bought just one. So I'm not saving anything at all. <laughs> and, and actually, if you hadn't programmed me to think that bargains are something that we should strive for and we should feel we should get the end, little endorphin rush because we've had a bargain. Look at us. Uh, if you hadn't programmed me to feel like that, I wouldn't be spending anything. So I'm not saving anything at all when I have your three for the price of one you know, offer. Wow. I'm not. I'm I not love saving. the way conversation's gone. I'm listening to a book called Fuck It Therapy. It's a great yeah. book. And um, <laughs> I've only it. just got into it. I started, started it. And it's so true what he was saying, because if you take a look at our industry, our society, our, the way that we're, we're conditioned and hypnotized and brainwashed to buy things, they're struggling, well, not struggling, but they kind of have to, you know, we all have, most of us have cars, we have a house, we have enough food, and then they're kind of like, oh, wait, now we're not making any money. So what else can we tell the public that they need in order to be happy? So then it's a new iPhone. And then, oh, wait, you've got another new iPhone that you need to be happy because it's not, and we're constantly, we need this body, we need to have this. We we don't actually need anything apart from self-love, I believe. I agree with you. I mean, gosh, I have this silly vision, you know, it still sometimes comes to me. Can't we go back to the the pre-Norman Saxon days when we lived in communities and everybody supported each other and nobody starved and, you know, everybody looked after everybody's kids and we we were more more than happy. But anyway, that, that that's just a dream, and it's just a historic dream. But things were different um, way back, way way back when. And as humans, we were healthier then than we are now. Physically, yeah. we were healthier a hundred years ago than we are now. Yeah. So this, we, I think the theme of this talk, I, I, did, I had no idea where it was going to go, but I knew whatever no, it was going to be, it was going to be valuable. Is to like take your power back. That's nothing's the one. bad, nothing's wrong, nothing, you know, it doesn't matter what he or she's doing. What do you want for you? And Peter, I would love for you to share how people can work with you and how they can find you and how they can contact you. Oh, goodness. Um, well, first of all, my name is on Facebook. So it's Peter Lantern on Facebook. And I'm an open book. If you wanted to contact me, you'd send a message. Even if you didn't want to friend me on Facebook, send me a message i I friended you i was like hey i'm just gonna friend him (laughs) i wondered who you were and it's like and then i found out oh my gosh yeah i know i know who you are wow (laughs) yes of course i'm going to accept that (laughs) um uh, but yeah so there's that i have a website i mean it's lancethypnosis.com so www.lancethypnosis.com lancet hypnosis is just one word um so there's a form in there my telephone number is all over it. People can phone me. It's it's very, very easy. And by the way, I'm easy to talk to. You are. I'm, very, I'm a very gentle soul. I'm, I'm very excited when I'm talking to you because this is a passion for me. F- freedom for people mm. in all the areas of their lives. You know, pulling back the curtain and noticing that the Wizard of Oz is just an old man. Wow. That's what I want to do. You know, and that doesn't mean we can hate the old man. We can just accept him for doing what he's doing, but he no longer influences us. That's so powerful. What would people come to you for? So who do you help with what problems? The same the ones that you do. Because in all fairness, Victoria, while, you know, your, your body love program speaks to that, how many things are you picking people up on? 
I mean, the emotional issues that you freeing people from, the ones that have been hurting them, holding them back, keeping them stuck, even when they don't know that they have these things, that's what you're doing. I do that too. Um, people come to me for quit smoking. One session, done. You'll never smoke again. That's it. You'll come to me as a smoker. You'll leave me as a non-smoker. By the way, you don't have to come to me. I'm, I'm still using my old-fashioned pre-COVID language because I'm now online and I have clients all over the world, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Stockholm, Germany, America. We have a lot of international listeners. I have a little spy on my all of my data and analytical things of my podcast. And I've got listeners in Russia, the USA, Australia, yeah. Egypt. So yeah, everywhere. Please. So, you know, and by the way, you don't have to worry about time zones for me because I have a New Zealand passport. I'm used to being up all night. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> The, 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 the times and days don't worry me. Uh, sometimes a, a New Zealand or an Australian client, I do have to be up at two o'clock in the morning for them because it's the only slot they, they've got that can really work for them. You know, people have got children in other parts of the world, just like we do here, and they've got jobs and they've got commitments. So I fit in. I'm here to help people. It's my passion. So grief and loss, any kind of emotional pain as well, which is this, these things are more obvious. You know when you've got that. And you wonder how you can do it, you know. So my aim is to leave you with great memories, but remove the pain so that you can still you can still have a memory and you can still feel the enjoyment of a memory, but the pain has gone. And you so have you lifetime can, guarantee as well, don't you? Which I do have a that? lifetime guarantee for all of my work. It means that, you know, I I will say that I always ask. I always aim and my intention and my expectation more to, more than anything, my expectation is that when you see me, it'll be done that one session. Sometimes there are things lurking in the basement that didn't come out when we were talking that haven't been addressed. And you may feel, my gosh, something's coming back or, or, you know, it hasn't gone away. You don't panic. You just come back to me. We'll deal with it. It's very rare, but it does happen. And, you know, I've got, there's a, on my website, there's a young woman, um, I can call, I can tell her name because she's on my website, there's a video, Jade did two videos for me, what's it like to be hypnotized, because it's probably not what people think, you know, I'm not in control of you, you're in control of everything, but she also did one because she came to me with a stammering, stuttering issue that she's had since she was a little girl, five, and we had a long talk and I did the work. And it had gone and she left and she was happy and everything was great. And then two weeks later, I got a phone call and she's in tears and she's stuttering on the phone. It's come back. It's come back. I said, no, no, no. This was in the days when people were coming to see me more. And she just came and I said, come and see me now. I said, it's the, it's evening. I said, I've got, I'm doing nothing. Come, come and see me. And she came around and after we stopped the crying and we had a, a talk and I saw something that in what she told me that, she hadn't told me the first time around. It's like, okay, now I know what it is. Well, that was three years ago. And she, I see her, she lives local to me and it's not come back. Wow. I will be with you all the time. There are sometimes, I mean, very rarely I've had to work with somebody, maybe three or four goes, but you know, for me, that's not like you pay me for extra sessions. You don't. When you work with me, I'm there until that change has been made. Yeah. I will never let you go. I'll I love hold you, on. like your heart and your soul and your passion to help others. It's there. <sighs> That's where I get my joy, Victoria. That's where my joy comes from. That's where so- well, I'm, I'm getting a bit emotional now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're soul brother and sister, because it is. you yeah. are this, we just, we feel the same. If we can help people, it fills every single cell of my body with the happiness and joy. I can't even Same describe here. it in words. I'm just like, oh, yes. I think, I think for us too, Victoria, it's because we've been through mm. difficult experiences. Let's call them difficult, challenging experiences. I'm not going to bring traumatic words back into play here. But we have. We both have. And we've come through it. And we know that you can come through it. Mm -hmm. we know that every one of us out there can come through it and it doesn't matter i don't see small issues and big issues whatever is keeping you stuck from your 
ideal happiness, then let's deal with it. Let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Let's examine it. Let's sit with it and let's release it. Um, is there any such thing as 100% happiness where you're still? My belief is no. I believe that when you find what you believe is your true happiness now, some spark inside when you've got this freedom says, now look at that horizon. There's another horizon. Let's go have a look. Oh, yeah. That's find, the beauty of life to always. Yeah, I think, you know, when you stood, when we stood, stood still, when we tell ourselves, this is it, I've reached everything I, I need to be. That's when the decay starts and we start to die in this existence and this experience get to get ready for another one, maybe. But um, but I, th I think, you know, life is is to just find these great joyful things. So we we hit a goal. Let's let's use like, you know, NLP coaching terms. You know, you find your target, you find your goal, you hit it. But don't stand still. Take a look at the horizon now. What do you see out there? What's out there? Wow, I want to try that. And you're never too old. No way. Maybe, maybe I am. Uh, I wanted to be an astronaut. I'm, I have to say, I find it very difficult to have the belief that I'm going to be an astronaut. Like I wanted to be when I was a kid. Maybe it's not your whole purpose to be. I astronaut. don't think. I don't think it is. <laughs> when I was a kid, it looked exciting. Now I know how absolutely dangerous and horrific the training is to do it. I don't think it's my sole purpose at all. My sole purpose is to point out the distant horizon to people that want to enjoy their life. Mm. I love that. Thank, and I could talk again for hours. Me too, I know, but we... We I will put all of Peter's links in the show notes, as always. So oh, you thank you. Directly and go to see him. But please do, please do say hi. He is amazing. You can feel his energy. Me and him share very childlike energy yeah. with, with who we are. But thank you, Peter, for being here. And this is one of many, I'm sure, about that. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I'm, I am so honored to be able to speak with you and to your audience. I mean, I'm, I feel really blessed. I know that's a trite thing for some people to say, but I really mean it. I do. I'm um, grateful. Um, that I'm we've, just lost the words. Met. You're amazing. Thank you so much. You are too. We will see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. God bless you, everyone.